Loving Father, we thank you, we praise you. Lord, thank you for this good morning. When we started, the temperature was zero degree and it was awesome. Every day the temperature varies. In the same way, Lord, our thoughts varies. But you are the God who teaches us to maintain our faith because your word never changes. Everything in this life will change, but not your word. And Father God, this morning as we are gathered here, help us to renew our mind and get our mind fixed on that unchangeable word of God, the only truth that sets us free. So here we are excited, O Lord, in your presence, asking you to give us the wisdom and especially the understanding because each one of us are facing trials in our life and every trial is challenging us, actually coming against us to kill us and destroy us. As you said, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, but I've come to give you life, life in abundance. So here we are seeking your abundant life that you came to give us, Lord, and we can only receive it through your word. So help us, Almighty God, to receive your word with understanding so that this understanding will change our attitude, our behavior, our actions, our words, our response and fill us with joy, which is the strength in the day of battle, experiencing your peace that surpasses all understanding that guards our heart and mind through our Lord Jesus Christ. So here we are, our hearts are open, Lord, for your seed to be planted, our minds open to be renewed, our ears anointed to hear your voice, for we are your sheep and follow you. Have your way in our midst, Holy Spirit, destroy every unbelief, destroy anything that is obstructing us to receive your word and let your word be implanted inside a spirit, bringing forth a harvest of a hundredfold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just a quick um, word to you. Last night we were in Tulamur. Right? Yes. yes. Tulamur. Tulamur. Yes. yes. And um, what was, uh, there was an amazing miracle. And the miracle was that this girl is 23 years old and at the age of seven, she lost her sight completely. She was 100% blind and it was at the end of the session, the last 10 minutes, that her aunt picked her up and brought her in front and the Lord touched her and she received 100% sight back completely recovered and restored. Hallelujah. For me, that clapping will be more beautiful if I hear you doing the same to others. This morning, I was talking to a sister in Kuwait and this sister who used to be a very strong, bold, courageous and a very strict, disciplined teacher, a catechist. And nobody would mess with her. Everybody, including the parents, would be scared of her. Okay. And by God's grace, we bumped into each other. And when our conversation began, she realized that she had tremendous strength on one side, but without the word of God. So I told her, if only you can join with me and learn the truths, the same gift that you have, the same passion that you have for Jesus will become extremely fruitful because even though you're a catechist, you cannot heal a person with simple headache. But if you can understand the truth, this truth will not only set you free first,
but the children will be on fire. So this morning I was having breakfast, Vijay was there with me and I began to talk to her and she said all the beautiful things. Then I said, where are, when are you going to pay my fees? So she said, what fees do you want me to pay? I'm ready to pay. And I said, my fees are when you share me, send me testimonies of how the Lord is doing amazing things through you. And then she started saying, in the charismatic I'm preaching the word, the Bible study that I have is amazing, the catechist, the teacher, the students are so amazing, this is happening, that is happening, all those beautiful things. And I said, thank you very much, you have paid my fees in full. So this morning, if you are sitting here, please, make a decision to pay my fees. And what would be my fees? My fees would be that not only your life change, but much more than that, through your changed life, you are now going around and sharing the gospel with the demonstrative power and setting the captives free. And I told her, as a teacher, the greatest joy for a teacher is when the student goes ahead of the teacher and does marvelous things for the kingdom of God. And that's why this is not a preaching session. This is a teaching session. What's the difference between preaching and teaching? Simple. Preaching starts with P and teaching starts with T. <laughs> Wasn't that a good difference? Yes. Preaching is only to convert a person. Teaching is when the person says, I am willing to become a disciple. A disciple means I am willing to learn to become like my master. Our master is Jesus and he is here to teach us so that we become what? A disciple. Means I am learning to become like my teacher, my master. Amen? Amen. So please understand this is a teaching class, not a preaching class. Because you are already converted. And we are not satisfied with our conversion. We want to grow much and become like our teacher, our master. Praise God. Praise God. So we'll write down some points and then we will start. And my brother will give you also on the screen if you miss something. Okay? So, taking authority over your fear. Okay, first point is, fear wants to take, write down, fear wants to take over, write down, write down, fear wants to take over my life, but I don't have to let it, but I don't have to let it. Allow Jesus, allow Jesus to diagnose, to diagnose, to diagnose. Di diagnose and monitor your life and monitor your life to identify, to identify areas of fear to identify areas of fear take your spiritual authority take your spiritual authority okay if i sit this right it's better take your spiritual authority over the devil's strategy, over the devil's strategy, and rebuke fear, and rebuke fear for good. We'll study it, don't worry, okay? Next one.
fear connects you to satan's desire fear connects you to satan's desire fear connects you to satan's desire for you the same way for you the same way that faith connects you to that faith connects you to god's desire for you next next fear is an open door fear is an open door that brings in disaster mm-hmm. fear is an open door that brings in disaster next you click twice don't click twice even fear we are not aware of even fear we are not aware of will keep our faith from working even fear we are not aware of will keep our faith from working next we often express our fear we often express our fear in different words in different words to hide it to hide it from ourselves next weighing on you means you are carrying the care weighing on you means you are carrying the care concern next concern worry and use wisdom are rephrases of fear next jesus took issue with martha jesus took issue with martha because she was troubled because she was troubled and not looking at jesus she was troubled and not looking at Jesus Luke 10 38 to 42 If you look at problems if you look at problems you are not looking at Jesus If you look at problems you are not looking at Jesus and fear comes in and fear comes in you cannot be in faith you cannot be in faith and in fear you cannot be in faith and in fear 
at the same time. Fear and faith, fear and faith take up the same space. Fear and faith take up the same space in your heart. If fear is there, if fear is there, there is no room for faith. There is no room for faith. Next one. We don't need to assume. We don't need to assume that once we are free from fear, we don't need to assume that once we are free from fear, it is gone and will not try to come back. It is gone and will not try to come back. We don't have to tolerate fear. We don't have to tolerate fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So let's start from the beginning. Fear wants to take over your life. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. But you don't have to let it. Praise God. Now, Praise God. what is fear? F E A R. What is fear? False evidence appearing real. Good. Yes, right now. Right now, very good. Faulty, faulty evidence appearing real. It is also faulty expectation. Faulty expectation. Praise God. Now, now, the word fear in the Bible appears for the first time in Genesis chapter 3. Okay? When God created the world, He created by faith and He set a law in motion and that was the law of faith. Faith brings life, fear brings destruction, fear brings death, okay? So when God created the world, he created the world by his word, agreed? <coughs> the word went and produced all things that we see. Then he created man and he breathed his breath into man and this man whom he created, he created in his likeness and image. So man is not God, but he is the reflection of God. So just as God works, man has the ability to work the same way and God used word of God, the word coming out of his mouth, filled with faith that destroyed darkness, and brought in the light. The word brought in life when God spoke by faith. Now we know, oh, let's go to Genesis so that we understand better. Genesis 1. One twenty two Genesis one twenty two. Can you read it, please? 
Brother, can you put it on the screen, please? And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful. Can you see that? Yes. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, and let fowls multiply in the earth. Now let's take the first word, and God blessed them. And God Blessed. Now, what's the meaning of the word blessed? Hello, what's the meaning of the word blessed? Good wishes. Ah, the word blessing means empowerment. Okay? Empowerment for what? Empowerment to succeed. Empowerment to bring God kind of result. Empowerment to be victorious. Empowerment to bring God's goodness on this earth. Empowerment with authority and power. So when God said, uh, God blessed them, means what? He empowered, empowered them. Now what's a curse? A curse is also an empowerment to fail. Empowerment to be destroyed. Empowerment to be a victim. Empowerment to be filled with sorrow and pain and torture and torment. That is a curse. So why did God bless them when they had plenty in the Garden of Eden? There was plenty of food. Plenty of land. Everything was superb. Because they were the only two over there. The reason God blessed them is because God who has created man in his likeness and image wanted man to be a co-partner with him. That God created the Garden of Eden, one piece and the whole earth. So what was here, man had to take it and produce it all over the earth, the Garden of Eden. And for that, God had empowered Adam. Now how did it get activated? The blessing got activated. It got activated the moment God spoke the word. Adam believed the word, received the word and got into action. And when he got into action, the power was activated. So, so how does the power of God get activated? He speaks the word, he spoke the word, Adam received the word, believed the word and moved into action. Even today, how does God's power get activated? The, power, the word of God is spoken, the person on the other side receives the word, believes the word and, and that takes the corresponding action and the power is activated. So the power gets activated by believing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Adam believed the word. He had the power, authority over all creation. And that's what God said. He blessed them saying, be fruitful. So what will blessing do? Make, bear fruitful, bear Make you fruitful. Bear what else? Multiply. multiply. So whatever you have in your hand will multiply because of the blessings of God. So the resources that you have are bound to multiply because of the blessings. Praise God. Praise and multiply and fill the waters of the earth. So, so with the resources, man was supposed to multiply everything that God had given to man over the whole earth. Now, how many of you have ever been on flight? Yes. All of us. When you see on flight, don't you see the whole earth is empty? Only when we come close to the city, we find all the houses there. Otherwise, when you see from the top, the earth is totally empty. For kilometers together, and all that people are living is in a place where it's a city, 
and the rest of the place. Oh, which one is more? Crowded place is more or empty land is more? Empty land. Empty land is more. In, in multiples. Yes. Correct? And what was God's plan? That man could multiply in such a way that he fills the whole earth and there was no death. There was no sickness. There was no disease. And he was in charge of all this. Now God said, the whole garden is yours. One tree is mine. Don't eat it. Don't eat the fruit of the tree. Okay. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 3 and see where does that fear comes from. Genesis 3 and start with verse 1. Praise God. Praise God. Now the serpent was more subtle. Come on. Genesis 3 verse 1 onwards. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, and he and he said, and he said. Now please understand the whole of the spiritual world gets activated when words are spoken. The whole change takes place. Now when God blessed Adam, he said, so the moment he said, there was an activation by speaking. So here is Satan speaking to the woman, what? Words. And he said to the woman, do you understand? Yes. yes. So the spiritual world gets activated by speaking. speaking. In, in your life, do you do some speaking? Yes. yes. So are we, are we extremely careful when we open our mouth and speak? No. Because your speaking has extreme, extreme hold in the spiritual realm. And when you speak words, not choosing the right words, it can kill you and destroy you. So we got to be extremely vigilant when we open our mouth because your words speak about your future. Your words have a hold on your current situation and also it has an impact on your future. That's the spiritual law, how God created man. So, he said unto the woman, yea, has God said, you shall not eat of the tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruits of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall where are you? No, no, he is not there. Verse 3. But the fruit of the tree which is in the garden, in the, in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Now, what's that last line? Lest you die. No, no, no. Did God say not to touch it? Yes. He never said not to touch it. He said not to eat it. But Eve said not to touch it as well. Now, now, did she add something that God had not told? Yes. yes. Now, who ate the fruit first? Eve, Eve or Adam? Eve. Eve. And then she gave the fruit to? Adam. So sin came into the world through Eve or Adam? Eve. But the Bible doesn't say sin came into the world through Eve. It came through Adam. So how come Eve got spared? Even though she made the first blunder. Because Eve was God spared. <laughs> he loved us so much that he said, okay, doesn't matter. <laughs> Even today, God is so partial with the woman. 
did you did you believe my answer was right? No. No. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Then why did why does the Bible say sin came into the world through man? Sin came into the world through man because the instruction was given to Adam, and at that time he was not created. Oh. And then God put him him to sleep, and then he created Eve. So according to me, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. According to me, what I think, he would have said, "Darling, you are giving me fruit from every tree in the garden. What about this tree?" <laughs> and Adam must have said, "Listen, don't even go close to it. Don't even touch it. You'll die." <laughs> and, and and the woman, he, he must have added some words to Eve to keep her away from the tree. Don't even look at it. Okay, and those words. Must have been the dangerous words because when she said, "Don't even touch it," yeah. Satan would have said, "Hey, listen, I touched it. Did I die?" So, what does that mean? When we add any word of our own to the truth, it becomes a lie. When you subtract any word from the truth, it becomes a lie. You can't add it. You can't subtract it; it has to be the same. And you mean by that? That's when Satan prompts you to say something. Is it, you say you add or subtract. Yeah, we add some things of our own spices. Mm -hmm. Then, or we subtract some of the things. Mm -hmm. It is no longer a truth. Okay. Now, now it's Satan, it's lest you shall die. Then, then next, next, brother. I am looking from your. Yeah. And the serpent said unto the woman, "You shall surely not die." Then, next, for God does know that in the day you shall eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. You shall be like God. Did he say, "You shall be as God"? Now, was Eve already like God? So she was already, but did she know? No. The, isn't it the same even today? Yes. We are having one third of us as God because the Holy Ghost resides in us. But do we know? And that's why we live a defeated life. She was already like God, but she was like God in a body, in a soul, in a spirit. Exactly like God, praise God, and that's why she was extremely healthy, praise God. No sickness, no disease, no corruption in the mind. That's how God created man. Then after that, and when the woman saw, ha ha, and when the woman saw what that the tree was good for food. Had she not seen the fruit before? She had, but the knowledge said, the information said, don't even touch it. Might be Adam had said that, but God had said, don't eat the fruit; you will surely die. Now, was Satan giving her knowledge that looked to be good, that looked to be true, but it was the biggest lie? Yes. yes. Did she know he was lying? in the same way even today do we receive information from this world yes yes do we download information from this world yes so do we always work hard to get information from the bible or from the world and if you are getting the knowledge from the world the worldly knowledge will produce what faith or fear fear Anything that is not truth will produce fear. fear. Yeah. Anything that is of the word of God will produce faith. faith. So what is being produced? Fear. Fear. So she saw that the food, that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took the fruit thereof, and did, she did eat, and gave also unto her husband, and. They both ate it. Hallelujah.
He also did eat it. Praise God. Yes. So my question to you is, who messed up Adam's life? Was it God? Was it the devil or was it Eve? He himself. That's right. He took a decision to eat the fruit. What do you think? Why do you think Adam would have eaten that fruit? Even today, isn't the Eve convincing her husband? All you wonderful Eves. <laughs> Darling, please. He could have been afraid. He chose himself. Okay, let me tell you. This is my understanding. Yes. The moment Eve must have eaten that fruit, Adam loved his wife so much that he said, You are surely going to die. Okay. So let me die with you. Now the second Adam, who is Jesus, also had the same, same thing happened to him in the garden of Gethsemane, where his bride, that is we, who have already eaten the fruit and we are dying and going to hell. And now Satan comes and tempts him and says, don't go to the cross. And that's where the battle begins in the garden of Gethsemane. He is talking to his father and saying, Father, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. It's not about dying. It's about when Adam and Eve ate the fruit, they were separated from God. So Jesus, when he eats of the fruit, which is sin, he has committed no sin, but he's going to eat it because of us. He too will be separated from his father. So he is in the same dilemma that Adam was. But the difference is, Adam chose to disobey God and die for his wife Eve. Whereas Jesus is saying, I am not going to die with you, but I'm going to die for you. <clears throat> so Jesus chose to obey his father, even to the point of death, that he died <coughs> for us. Whereas Adam disobeyed God and died with Eve, whereas Jesus died for us. Because God made Jesus to be sin, who knew no sin. But he did not commit sin, even to the point of death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So then, then, after that, and the eyes of them were both opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves. So who was the first designer of clothes? And I'm only, praise God. When did the religion start? The start of religion is here. They covered themselves with fig leaves, believing that I am clean. It's covered. But it was covered on the outside, but the nakedness was still there. The sin was still there. And that's what religion does. It makes you feel everything is clean. But deep down, the root is still corrupted. Praise God. Praise God. So they see fig leaves together and made themselves apron. So the clothes that we wear, what does it remind you? It reminds you of the curse that came on man. So what are clothes? Nothing but covering the curse.
than what were they covered with before, with the glory of God. Then, after that, 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife, what? Hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Why were they hiding? Let's see why they were hiding. Look at the next line. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? And look at what Adam said. Then. And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid. I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid. So when does fear come? For disobedience to come, what is the main key? Let's say, Satan had not given any information to Eve. Would this happen? So, so what did Satan do actually? And what does Satan do in our life today? Out of the out of the variety of trees in the garden, he got a focus on that one tree. So she was God conscious with the knowledge of God. He got her out of God conscious to self conscious by saying, If you eat, you will become like so she was God conscious, he got her into self-conscious by giving her lies. Now when you open the Bible, does the Bible speak about being God conscious or self-conscious? God conscious. In fact, the Bible teaches us to crucify ourselves so that we can be God conscious. So in a day, how much time do we spend Thinking about ourselves. A lot. A lot. How much are you counting your self benefits, your self comfort, your self? And as long as that self is on the throne, you will be in trouble. You will have fear. The same person is now no longer concerned about self, but the person has crucified his self and is now concerned about God and others. Now, what will be his attitude? Will it be the same? No. You take any saint, for example, any person who is a saintly in the church, were they self-conscious? Self-focused or God and others? God, God, God. How do you know a person has got tremendous relationship with God? Tremendous. The key to that is the more and more you become God conscious, the reflection of that will be you are concerned about others' benefit, not even thinking about your own comfort at all. So when Jesus came to give us life, did he come to give us life that is concerned about you or life that is concerned about how you can use your life for the benefit of others? What if Jesus had to come on a mission and then say to his mama when he went for the wedding, Mom, what about me? You have not yet even looked out for a girl for me. And listen, mom, you can choose anybody, even if she's blind, doesn't matter. I can fix her eyes. If she's lame, no problem, mom, I can fix her legs. But just get one woman for me. Did he do that? Was he a man on a mission? Yes. What about you? Do you have a mission in your life, or are you just living your life morning? 
and ending up in the evening at night. A person who is a Christian and having no mission, no goal, his life is perishing, bringing no profit in the kingdom of God. If you do not have a mission or a goal, your life is getting wasted away. The people of the world understand mission and goal. That's why when you go for a job, they see to it that by the end of the month, they say, we want all our targets met. And if you don't meet the target, you are fired. Do they put pressure on their staff? Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, does the staff say, that's my capacity? No. They will always give you figures beyond your capacity. And what will you be doing? Really working hard. And by the end of the day, you have met the target. They remove the best out of you in the world. Now, the same person who is performing so beautifully in his office, does he have the same kind of attitude when it comes to the kingdom of God that he sets up his goals and goes for it? No. You know why we find no result? Because we have never got goals set. For God, is it me? For God. No, no, no. When, when the first time I came, I came without setting goals. The second time, I set the goals. The third time, I gave the dates to my brother Amal. And the first thing he asked is, how am I going to keep you busy? Because you want job from morning till night. How will I give you that job? Praise God. Praise God. And I said to him, that's not your business. That's not my business. We set the goal and God will do the rest. So when you see the schedule for Ireland, it's from morning till late night, 10 o'clock, plus traveling. And normally, if a person is going to go like this for 20 days non-stop, what will happen? It's so He'll get burnt out, right? Yeah. Now, I'm going like this for the whole year. Drive. Sorry? She's an, she said you're on overdrive. I'm not on overdrive. I'm depending on the grace of God. So when you're depending on God's grace, you are operating on the supernatural. So for fear to come in, what does the devil have to do? He has to put pressure on your thinking that you become what? Self-conscious. By the end of the day, you count your blessings. You, you are more interested in my own benefits. Okay, I am ready to do this job. What will be my take? And as long as that is there, it will always give you worry, anxiety, fear and stress. What about the early church? Did they have persecution? Yes. Extreme. Yes. But did, were they stressed out? No. No. Because for them, dying was excitement. Because their focus was, I'm going to be dying for Jesus. And when I die for Jesus, the next moment, I'll be meeting my master. Were they thinking about their benefit or were they selling off their property and bringing and giving it to the apostles and saying, hey, distributed among the poor who have nothing. And that's why, because of their attitude towards God and others, what did, what did the Holy Spirit do? He began to add thousands and thousands to the numbers. They were God conscious, they were word conscious, and their mind was full of the Spirit of God. Is that right? Yes. What about us today? Have you set some goals that in this month, Lord, I'm setting up, you are going to give me 50 souls. How? I don't know. I'm going to pray about it and I'm ready to move into action. Give me 50 hardcore people who never come to church. Now, have you set the goal? Now, when you have set the goal, is the Holy Spirit your helper? Yes. So, is he supposed to help you? Yes. 
But have you ever given him some job to help him, yes. help you? Yes. Because the job that we want to give him to help us is all about me. Are you setting up goals to help others or help me? What's your prayer? Help me or help me to help others? What's your prayer? Bless me or bless me to be a blessing to others? Hey, come on. What's, what's your top priority? Me or others? Me for free. <laughs> me for? Me first. Me first. And as long as it is and as long as it is me first and that me is not satisfied, will it give into fear? But the, the spiritual law says, when you do it for others, you have done it for Jesus. And when you have done it for Jesus, the reward will surely come. <coughs> so the more you think about me, the more you are in fear. The more you think about others, now blessing will come searching for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are you understanding? Yes. yes. Praise, God. Praise God. So, is fear going to try its best to get in to get you into that me, yes. me, yeah, and me? Yes. And and where does that come from? See. You know that the eagle, she has got an eaglet. And she brings the food, the mama. Yeah. Yes. And what are the eaglets? Me, 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 me. Yeah. Now, the eaglets are grown. Do they want to get out of their nest? No. 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 Because it's comfortable. Mom is getting food. Me, me, me. And fill your stomach and keep on <laughs> dancing in the nest. Yeah. So what does the mama do? She gets inside the nest. So now, there is so much of unrest mm -hmm. that the eaglet has to come out of the nest and when she comes to the edge she sees it's a free fall cliff and what does the mama do she pushes the eaglet out of the nest what's the eaglet pray father in the name of jesus my mama got demons in her <laughs> get those demons out in the name of jesus demons leave my mama she's trying to kill me Is the mama trying to kill no, the eaglet no, no. or trying to teach the eaglet and telling the eaglet, listen, your potential is much bigger than this and I have to kick you out of this nest because if I don't kick out, you'll never learn to fly. So is there a free fall? Yes. yes. Is the eaglet praying, God help me, yes. God save me. Yes. Yeah. But in the midst of that, is the eaglet learning to flap the wings yes. as fast as they can? Would she do the same inside the nest? No. 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 And what about the father eagle? He's waiting there. Before the eaglet can touch the ground, he in the, the mid-air, lifts the eaglet, brings it back to the nest. What is the eaglet bring now? Father, thank you for my dad. So loving, he is a savior of my soul. He saved my life. And when I look at my mama, I hate her. What does the mama do? Once again pushes the eaglet down. In the eyes of the eaglet, is mama good? No, no, not And dad, not only good, very good. Praise God. When this process keeps on going, the eaglet learns to fly. After the flying and learning to fly, now is the eaglet understanding what was the intention of the mother. Yes. In the same way, the heavenly father is seeing you in the nest, sitting and doing me, 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 me. So he has to send some mama or somebody to poke you and make you uncomfortable so that you learn how to fly. You learn the attitudes of God, the attributes of God. You learn the word of God. You learn to renew your mind. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So which one is better, friends or enemies? <laughs> enemies will change you. Enemies will change you. Friends will comfort you. That's why when you are in extreme hardship, there are two things that can happen. Either you can become better or bitter. But one thing is sure, the change will take place in you. When you turn to God and do it God's way and begin to fill yourself with God's word, you will become a better person. The same trial. And the same trial when you do not have the word and you are fixed on your me, 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 me attitude, you are stressed out, you are depressed, you are in fear, you are going to die. Yes. So which one is better that we learn how to get this me, me attitude out, not get into bitterness, but get better. Yeah. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. 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 Anybody in the nest very comfortable? <laughs> All right. I'm very, I'm very comfortable in the nest. Yeah. And that's why the Father God has to use somebody to get you out. Thank you, Jesus. So, so the first point we wrote, fear wants to take over our life, but you don't have to let it. So who is in charge to give fear? See, before fear can enter in, fear will have to give you a notice. If you accept the notice, he has every right to destroy you. If you reject it, fear cannot enter in. Fear always has to take the permission of the person concerned. Let me give an example. Let me give an example. You remember Jesus was going in the boat and he said, let's go to the other side. Yes. Hmm? And all of a sudden it started a storm and the water began to fill the ship and Jesus was sleeping. Uh, I wonder how Jesus must have slept with water getting filled up. Was he underwater or was he on the surface? But he was still sleeping. What about the apostles? They, they, were, they were trying their best to get the ship to the shore. And now that they saw that every effort is going, no, it's not bringing any change. In fact, they are losing the battle. They woke Jesus up. And what did they say? Don't you even care? We are perishing. So in other words, looking at the situation that they were in, did they have information that they were going to die? No. That's why they said, we are perishing. So based on the circumstances, okay, now, does a cup talk to you? No. no. Okay. Does a glass talk to you? No. no. Okay. Is this a transparent glass? Yes. Let's say, which is the best drink that you love? Of the juice. I don't drink. You don't drink any juice? No, no, no. Let's say it was let's say it's grapes or orange juice. Okay. And you are really thirsty. And I've got orange juice in this glass. And it's filled up to here. And there's a bottle there. And there's one more empty glass there. Will that bottle talk to you? If the bottle doesn't talk to you, something else will talk to you. Yes. Let, for example, uh -huh. uh, can the lawyer's notice talk to you? The lawyer's lawyer, lawyer, yes. his notice coming to you. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Can the doctor's report talk to you? Yes. Oh yeah, that one will talk to me and keep me awake the whole night. Yes. So that means things talk to you. Yes. 
So when those things are talking to you, are they talking to you verbal words or silent words in the mind? Silent. The communication from here to your mind, you can't hear a sound, but the communication is going on. It's a Wi-Fi connection. And when that Wi-Fi connection is on, do you accept it or do you say no when those thoughts are going on? Sometimes we can Because we don't understand that those thoughts are the roots by which in the future we will produce the root, uh, the fruit. That's why Jesus said, murder is not the real culprit. But hating your brother is the real culprit. Murder is an action. Hating is a thought in your mind. So the thought in my mind is the root. And if the root is evil, it will give birth to a fruit which has to be evil. So before the thought can, can be conceived, like a woman, when the conception takes place, does the baby grow? Or do you tell the baby, freeze in the name of Jesus for one year? It grows. Whether you like it or not, it grows. In the, in the same way, the thoughts that you have received and you have not rejected with the word of God, it is surely growing. And that's why Jesus says, it's not your action that's the real culprit, it's your thought. That's why people try to change their actions without changing their thoughts. And then they get into frustration because they try to change the action with their willpower. So if you want to change your life, what do you need to do? Change your thoughts. And that's why the word repent does not mean change your action. The word repent means change your thinking. And when you change your thinking, keep that thinking strong. Don't allow it to change. You are already in the kingdom of God. So how does a person receive healing from a bondage? Just change of thinking. How does a person receive his healing? Change of thinking. How does a person receive deliverance? Change of thinking. How does a person receive salvation? Change of thinking. So what is the gospel doing? Challenging you to change your thinking. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So who is in charge of accepting the notice or rejecting the notice? Yeah. Yeah. Now when a person is in depression, what does that mean? That person has received the thoughts, accepted the thoughts, believed in those thoughts, and is now making the necessary adjustment based on those thoughts ruling over that person's life. Those thoughts have taken authority over that person. Is depression. What is faith? Faith is also thoughts that comes from the word of God and those thoughts have taken authority over the person that all his actions are based on those thoughts. So where do you get this faith from? Where do you get this fear from? Knowledge. So somebody sitting and studying to get knowledge from the Bible, what will he get? Faith. Faith. Another person is trying to get knowledge from the TV with all the worldly programs, what will he get? Fear. Fear. Somebody is loving to watch horror movies, what will he get? Fear. 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 So your five senses receive communication. So, how do I use my five senses? Am I extremely vigilant and says, hey, what I'm watching on TV, this is extremely displeasing to God and that's why I walk out to 
the person sits and keeps watching something that would have been a very extremely sexual movie will that have an effect on the person yes so before the seed can be planted does the seed needs your permission yes so in other words what attracts my focus will surely master me so if the bible attracts my focus then the bible will master over my life if the sexual movies attract my focus then that movie will master my life so who gives the authority to master so can fear ever come into me without my permission did you follow it yes so now here is an example there's martha and there's mary and jesus begins to identify and tell martha what was her problem let's go and study that in luke chapter 10 Is it interesting? Yes, it's very interesting. Luke ten thirty eight. Thirty eight to forty two. And it came to pass. Just one minute. 